24 volt Jeep versus 12 volt dune buggy. Three, two, one, go. So I figured it's about time to get rid of the upgraded Jeep power wheel that we have here. My son's getting a little too old for it and he's kind of moving his way up to, to motorized equipment. So right now uh, I'm planning on getting rid of this. But before I did, I wanted to show you guys the modifications I did to it just so uh, maybe it could help you out in whatever you're planning to do for your power wheel modifications. But uh, what, what happened with this one is that he, uh, my son got this, he was probably about four, used it for about a year or so, and then uh, he needed an upgrade. It was just not quite fast enough for him anymore. So I decided to uh, upgrade it and make it 24 volts. You can see here of the original battery compartment in the middle and kind of cut some of the plastic out and able to fit two 12 volt batteries in here connected in series with a fuse. I think this is a 20 amp fuse and you know did some rewiring and just kind of wanted to bring you along for this uh, modifications and um, you know maybe it can help you out okay so I think the best place to start is the batteries themselves the original uh, battery fit just as, as a square in here it was just the standard one that came with the toy and uh, it worked fine until that that kind of died about the same time he was needing an upgrade so I decided to to upgrade to two 12 volt batteries and i really wanted to keep the compartment the same as far as not huge modifications uh, to it so i decided to get these batteries uh, they're from gruber power services I, i'll put a link in the description uh, if i can find where where i bought these but uh, basically they're 12 volts 10 and a half amp hour and I, I got them just because of the dimension. The, the size of them was able to slide down into the compartment without much fuss. I just had to, one of the, some stiffener piece of plastic I had to cut out to get two of them to fit in here. So the little drawback we get is that it's only 10 and a half amp hours. And I believe the ones that come with it are about 12 amp hours. So it's, it ends up being that this is a few minutes uh, it runs out a few minutes slower than some of the other power wheels we have, but uh, it goes fast. So <laughs> that'd be the trade-off there. So anyway, I have these two batteries uh, put in here, and I'll show you kind of the next step, wiring them to the back. Uh, but right now, two batteries wired in series. Again, I got a 20 amp fuse between them. So here in the back, there's not much different. You can see it's just the standard seat, and I've already taken the screws out, so it's you know, easy access. And I've got some new motors and a speed controller you see. I'm just going to take some more of these items out here that I already took the screws out. So you kind of got the basics here. So the, I have the wiring from the batteries coming back here. Similar, I didn't really want to change this gearbox, uh, if you want to call it that, these series of switches. I didn't want to change that up. But my uh, idea was to put a this 24 volt uh, speed controller back here and that will allow my son to have more of a control of the uh, of the acceleration it wouldn't just be an on off switch it's kind of more of a gradual uh, pedal action and I was hoping originally that that would help uh, decrease any wear that it would have on the the gearing from the the motors to the uh, you know to the gearbox there so uh, that was my original intention but uh, that didn't didn't help much in that throttle control really didn't help much because basically all he was doing was just stomping on it to go fast so uh, didn't really help anything and also the original uh, setup I had was some rubber tires on the back I put these um, I'll show you a little bit later, but I put some rubber bike tires on the back to help with grip, and that really uh, messed up the gears really for it. So anyway, what I ended up going with this the, the speed controller, and it through some trial and error got it to work, and uh, we'll get you zoomed in on kind of the wiring next. All right, so 
So I'm gonna to try to find the uh, link to this speed controller. It's from electricscooterparts.com and it looks like it's the um, SPD24250A model. And really not, not a whole lot to it, but you have your positive and negative from the battery. It just comes straight, or from the series of batteries, comes underneath you know, the same wire path that the original wires went and plugs into the positive and negative inputs for the controller itself. And so that nothing much there. I used 10 gauge wire. Uh, it's a little heavier than what's in here, but uh, it, it works fine. So uh, into the positive negative. Then out the, and that's kind of this black and white, or black and red wires, kind of towards the end of the controller, if you could see that. So the ones on the very end are blue and yellow. And so what they are, are hooked, this is kind of the, uh, uh, takes the original throttle you know, on off switch and uh, just connects that to the speed controller. And so when you had the original switch for the throttle or for the, um, the gas pedal, I guess you'd say, I took them out and it comes off of this uh, gearbox here and it's red, black, and orange wires. The orange wire, uh, I believe, is what is used to short the motor when they let off of the of the pedal and that will stop the motor in its place instead of just kind of rolling to a stop. And so that helps kind of skid it, you know, kind of gives it brakes, I guess. But I didn't want that in this case because uh, I didn't want the, that kind of start and stop to really do a number on the gearing. So I just uh, un disconnected that orange and just left it here. So we're down to the black and the red wires from the, the shifter here and the red goes into the yellow, and the black goes into the blue. And so that, that's uh, kind of the, kind of close that circuit on the, on the gas pedal, if you call it that. The, uh, the, the next item is, uh, is the pedal itself, is the new pedal, it's just one wire. Uh, it, well, it's, in, it's three wires, but it's encased in one uh, jacket here, and this is this black cord coming through, and I, I'll show you what that pedal looks like. And basically the, the black comes through and it just connects, connects with the same uh, uh, three prong plug that's into the speed controller. The, the pedal is the same connector so it just fits right in nice. So this is uh, this uh, red, black and green wires kind of on the edge of the, of the uh, speed controller here. So the very last two and I think one other one I didn't use. Yeah, the, this small one in the middle. This is for a charger, so you can charge your batteries. I didn't have a 24 volt charger, so I didn't use those. And then there's for brake lights, and um, or for for brakes and for a stoplight. And I didn't have any of those, so I just left them unplugged. The other plugs we have here are, uh, I believe, it's just to get power to the system, I have these smaller wires and they go to the front and uh, hook up to the, the positive, negative of the battery itself. So it's just another power, I believe. I'll have to look up that again, I'm, I'm trying to remember now. But the, uh, there are two blue wires and you just plug those into the battery source. So that's kind of the wiring of the speed controller. I believe, I can't remember what I had originally I had something swapped and ended up shorting it out and I had to get another one, but this one is kind of the, just gives you an idea of what I did for the wiring of the speed controller. Okay, now onto the two motors that I have. The original setup that I had had this speed controller, nothing different with the motors and gearboxes, just left the stock 12 volt motors in there and uh, just ran 24 volts to it. So. Th those worked in that setup. I was thinking it would work for a while and they did for maybe a few months until they really just started. Uh, I think one of the motors died and the other, the gearbox was messed up. You could s see that the gears inside were just getting stripped. So, and that's when I had this rubber on the, t on the back tires. So what I ended up doing was going and buying two 24 volt motors and I ended up getting a new gearbox. And uh, so these came from ML Toys, and I'll post a link to those in the description, the 24 volt motors. So they are pretty good. They're the, what is it, the 775? Yeah, the 775 model. 
Uh, I haven't had any issues with them once I put them in. They're, they worked like a champ. I, I will say I think they're a little slower than the original 12 volt motors pushing 24 volts through them. They're just, you know, that's a lot. It ends up being a lot faster. Um, I would say a lot, maybe like a, a mile an hour faster uh, previously, but these uh, you know, have no issue with them, uh, you know, messing up, burning them up. So these have worked well. Then the gearboxes uh, have worked well. Uh, these are with the plastic uh, initial gear. It, there, you can get some that have that first gear that touches the motor gear to be metal. Uh, I didn't go that route. They're all plastic and I haven't had any issues, especially when I took the the rubber off of the back tires. So, really, so all that force, that initial force, is going into tire slippage versus uh, the gears themselves. So. These, these motors have worked out well. Okay, so I'm kind of backed you out here to see kind of the whole operation. And I did misspeak earlier, these uh, blue wires here, they go to the switch. That's the only difference with this is that you can't just hop in and, and hit go like you could the, the previous you know, stock version. With the speed controller, you have to turn it on and then hit go. So I have a switch here I'm gonna hit. And then we'll show you what this looks like when I press the. So you can see it's, we can kind of do, we can do uh, the throttle kind of slower speed and then get faster and faster. So. So that gives you a nice little bit of speed control, even though uh, they're basically just slamming it to the floor anytime they go. But again, so that gives you an overview of what the wiring in the back looks like and so I'll show you the throttle itself that I have and then uh, some of the modifications with lights and the tires on the front. Alright, this, this gives you an idea of what the dash looks like. I've made the change where I added this switch here and then added the, the pedal. So the, the switch uh, has a light on it so they know when it turns on so it has a nice uh, indication so when they get done they know to turn it off. That was the main reason for that. And then the gas pedal here that they can push on. And it just it spring loaded so it comes back up. So that's it. That's kind of the, the modifications on the inside here. And then I'll get to show you the, the front lights and the front tires here in just a minute. Well, here's the front of the Jeep itself. Uh, I ended up putting some you know BMX style bike tires on the front and was able to uh, cut them in half so uh, and then cut the ends of them so this is kind of what it looks like you know when you get it it's just a regular tire and you know cut the uh, cut through it and then you cut kind of edge you know side in the side every two inches or so so it will lay flat you know more or less when you put it on the on the tire or on the plastic wheel from the toy itself so uh, anyway, these are just the extras. I had some for the back tire that you know that I didn't end up using, took off. So really, there's not much to it. Just kind of get started on it, and then screw right into the plastic through the tire about every four inches or so. And having these front tires on there is a huge help because you have all this power from the back being pushing this thing forward. And what happens? They were trying to turn, and it was just plowing straight it wasn't trying to get it to turn so I you know we we live in a, a area where there's not much road we're not in a neighborhood so all of it is just riding in grass and kind of rough grass so these tires were really needed on the front to get this thing to turn around and it makes for a nice you know kind of skidding around corners because the back end doesn't have any tires and it just likes to slide around uh, and so uh, Anyways, that was a nice uh, addition that we did that we did early on and uh, kept with it. Another item we added were these lights, and I'll have a link to these in the description. These are great 12 volt LED lights, and when we uh, have nighttime power wheel races, uh, that works pretty cool. They they light up uh, pretty good. They're kind of directional, so it lights kind of like headlights would. So I have them just hooked up to one of the batteries, and then a switch with a light on it on the dash here. So turn them on makes for a nice uh, bit of driving at night and so uh, there's a nice little addition I think on it so anyway that was kind of the the gist of this project uh, it was nice it's been 
you know, kind of one of those projects that's gone on over time and we've made modifications to it. And here actually I'll show you uh, the, uh, the box that I have here of a bunch of parts. So these are some old gearboxes and plugs and tires and whatnot. So once you start modifying power wheels, you start getting broken parts or extra parts. So anyway, appreciate you sticking around for this episode and uh, hopefully you learned a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions you know, down below and maybe I can remember them, answer them. And uh, you know, this was a good, good project that we did and this uh, got a lot of use and so I think now it's gonna be some other kid's uh, fun toy. So anyway, thanks again.